Brittany Griner is a WNBA star who got arrested for marijuana at a Russian airport. She also, like Colin Kaepernick, does not believe in the national anthem, does not believe the national anthem should be played at WNBA games and said she's not coming out for the national anthem. Oh, hey, look, it's the guy who said this of slave owners. Do you know that the slave owners were compensated? After they lost their quote unquote property, the government compensated slave owners. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so when people talk about repar reparations, do they really want to have that conversation? Their property, their legal property was taken away from them after the after the Civil War. So uh, you can make an argument that the people that are owed reparations and not only just black people, but also the people whose quote property, close quote, was taken away. Believes the following to be true. The idea that there's systemic racism against black people is a lie. Are you Obama saying and Eric Holder have said, have said statements that have given them that impression. Country? Are you saying no, it is not a major problem in this country. He is a spiteful, hateful man who will do anything for ratings, including. The election of Donald Trump in 2016, in my opinion, was divine intervention. Towing the MAGA line for continuous clout. Would you have voted in favor or against the civil rights legislation of 1964? Yes, I would have voted against it. There's more, however. This is who Larry Elder is. Back to his Griner analysis. I don't know. Maybe right now, Griner has a little more appreciation for the freedom she had here in America. All right, enough. Elder, a longtime radio host, is no dummy. The problem is people follow Larry Elder's words and buy into his Kaepernick is anti-American nonsense and Griner is anti-American nonsense. What Elder intentionally fails to inform his viewers of is dissent is American. From unions, the civil rights movement, women's suffrage, all done because of dissent. The most patriotic Americans are ones who acknowledge its faults, not those who mindlessly toe the line of Americanism and in turn believe in nationalism. Now, Griner claims that here in America, you can't even drive without fear of being pulled over. How many times do we have to do this? It is a lie that the police engage in systemic racism. It is a lie that they're using deadly force against blacks just because they're black. It is a lie that the cops are pulling over black people just because they're black. Larry, Larry, Larry. Let's go one by one. A study by NYU found that in a data set of nearly 100 million traffic stops across the United States, black drivers were about 20% more likely to be stopped than white drivers relative to their share of the residential population. Out of these 100 million traffic stops, the findings concluded the following. Once stopped, black drivers were searched about 1.5 to two times as often as white drivers, while they were less likely to be carrying drugs, guns, or other illegal contraband compared to their white peers. That's systemic, sir. Now, before we hear, you are fake news. Let's add more context. When the sun sets and darkness hits, researchers found a five to 10% drop in the share of stopped drivers after sunset who are black suggesting black drivers are being racially profiled during the day. His line of police aren't hurting black folks because of their skin tone. How about this? In the course of one year, I've been stopped seven times by law enforcement officers. Not four, not five, not six, but seven times in one year as an elected official. Was I speeding sometimes? Sure. But the vast majority of the time, I was pulled over for nothing more than driving a new car in the wrong neighborhood or some other reason just as trivial. That's Senator Tim Scott, a MAGA stumper, saying this. Mappingpoliceviolence.org, as of this taping, found black people are 2.9 times more likely to be killed by police than white people in the United States. This framing Elder does is troublesome. Because here's what he did. He tried rubbing Brittany Griner's face in her own problems and Elder knowing his following. Having the MAGA base of bigots, white supremacists, and evangelicals point and laugh. And it is flat out wrong. Just as wrong as Elder pulling a gun on his ex-wife because they had an argument in their home per Politico's reporting. Alexandra Dettig told the outlet he checked if it was loaded while I was talking. He wanted to make sure I saw that he had it. Elder tried hiding his problems 
forcing Alexandra to sign a non-disclosure agreement because he knew he was wrong and he wanted to silence her. Maybe it's because Griner is black who Elder finds an easy target. Or perhaps maybe it's because she is a woman. After all, Elder, the failed gubernatorial candidate in California, showed his misogyny over and over again, calling women dumber than men. Lest we forget, Aaron Aubrey Kaplan wrote the following for Politico. After writing an essay about black female physicality that was intended to be humorous, but also analytical and serious, Elder took aim at her, scolding her on his radio show in Los Angeles. His words incensed me, she wrote, probably because the essay was fundamentally personal and his attack couldn't help but feel personal too. How dare he, he didn't even know me. On an impulse, I called up the radio station and in a few minutes, Somewhat to my surprise, I found myself on air with Elder. The exchange was brief. I asked him what exactly he didn't understand about my story. And he huffed, but didn't really answer. I was satisfied, at least. I'd said my piece. The producers then invited her back. And what she found was odd and quite troubling. Meeting Elder face to face at the KABC studio on La Cienega in Los Angeles, I was immediately caught off guard. He was low key and civil even amiable. Was this an act, a setup? Once the show started, he sounded more like the Larry Elder I recognize, brash, self-righteous. Still, he didn't ridicule or even challenge me or my story the way he had a few days before. It turns out he didn't really need to. His callers did all the debating. It was off the air during the commercial breaks that Elder dropped a bomb. Between the small talk, he told me casually that he had understood my essay just fine and all of its main points. In other words, he got it. But if you and I agreed, there'd be no show, I recall him saying. We wouldn't have this. He gestured to the lit up phone lines with a kind of glee. I was shocked. Not so much because he was admitting that his on-air personality was shtick, an act that required conflict with the left to stoke ratings. I was shocked that he was so willing to sacrifice his own philosophical alliances with black people to do it. Elder was no closet liberal, but clearly his conservatism was complicated, not as black and white as he represented to the public, and as he had represented to me. What's more, he had confessed the truth, like it was no big deal, as if intellectually selling out your own people when convenient was simply the price black Americans paid for success.